today I'm going to be showing you how to create an alarm, an alarm screen, and an alarm data logger in Visu Plus Express. Right now I have a completely blank screen open and we are about to create a new project to show you how to add alarm screens to your project. On the left hand side here at the bottom of your project explorer under commands we see new project and we're going to click on that. And it's going to bring up our create project wizard. The first screen has the simple things such as name which I'm just going to call alarm demo one. You guys can call it anything you would like. For the Windows CE platform, that all depends on the HMI that you will be exporting to. I personally am exporting to a 7 inch TP3070W, but you choose whatever you'd be using. The program will automatically default your width, height, and color depending on the one you choose. So let's hit next, and we're going to bring up the project component screen. This is the screen that's important for creating an alarm because the program defaults to adding four basic screens and no alarm screens. Since we know we're going to be putting an alarm in and need an alarm screen with it, we're going to want to check the alarm screens box to add one. It defaults to one, but you can add up to ten if need be. We're only going to be using one alarm today, so let's only add one screen. We also have the ability, just like we do with basic screens, to define that alarm screen name. So if we click on that, you see alarm screen one, the name. We're going to be creating an emergency stop button, so we'll call our alarm screen e-stop. We hit confirm and then exit and we'll click next here and when we do the project the program I'm sorry now knows to create an alarm screen when it creates the project so we hit next and we come into the screen design Visu Plus defaults to adding a navigation bar and screen title but what we want to add on here is at the bottom a status bar we're going to check that box because when we're in our simulation mode or on a screen it gives a little status bar on the bottom where we can see when our alarm is on so we're going to want to finish and it creates the project. So now here in the Project Explorer it has created the project and we're going to come down here to screens and expand that and we see our four basic screens along with our ESOP alarm screen. So we'll double click on screen one to open just one basic screen and then we'll also double click on our ESOP alarm screen that the program created because we chose an alarm screen. So we'll come back up here to screen one and the first thing we're going to do is add a switch with a light to portray some type of machine being turned on in the field. It could be a conveyor belt, anything that would be turned on and would have an indicator lamp with it to show that it's turned on. So if we come over here to toolbox, we'll minimize some things here to clean it up. The first thing we're going to add is a switch. So if we expand the switches here, a couple choices, we'll just drag and drop in here, switch C. Make it a little bigger and easier to see. And then the second thing we're going to put with that is an LED light to indicate that it's on. So we come up here to lights and LEDs, expand that, and we'll choose a red LED to drag and drop in. With those two in, we do have the ability to resize and move them around using our mouse, and we could double click on either of them and change the properties, but for now we're just going to leave them be. Now to make them work together, we need to create a variable that connects them. So we're going to come back over into our Project Explorer and about halfway down we see Real-Time Database. If we right click on that, we see the option of New Variable with Tag in parentheses. We can click on that and create a name for our new variable, which we are going to call Light. We hit OK and you see back in the Project Explorer that Real-Time Database has now expanded. It has a Variables category and our Light variable is now under that category. So if we grab the light variable, we can drag and drop it onto both our switch and our light. These two are now connected, and if we come up here into our project simulation mode at the top, save our project, and we'll see that they now work together. So we hit OK, and we now see that when we turn on the light switch, it also turns on the red light. Just like if you turn on a machine, there would be an indicator lamp telling people and the user that that machine is now on. So if we come up here and stop our simulation and go back into design mode, <clears throat> we can actually start with the alarm. We'll come back up to screen one. Our first step in creating alarm is adding an actual alarm button. So again, over in our toolbox, if we come up here to the top, we can see emergency buttons. We'll expand that and there's emergency A, B, and C. We'll just choose A, drag and drop it onto the screen. Like with all objects, we have the ability to move it with our pointer and click and drag to resize it. And also, if we double click, we open up the properties on the right hand side. Many options in here, but the thing that we're going to add right now under general is an object title. We can add e-stop, 
And to make it a little bit bigger and easier to see, we can come down at the bottom to title font, double click. That will open up our font box. And we can go ahead and make it a bold font and bump the size, the font size up to size 16. We hit OK and you can now see that our title font has changed. An object title is now visible. And if we come up to our green check mark and apply, you see that the title has now been put onto the button. Now that we have our emergency stop button on the screen, we have to create a, var a variable to go with that emergency stop. So just as we did with the switch in the light, we're going to come over into our project explorer, right click on real time DB, new variable, and this one we'll call e-stop. So we hit OK, and you'll see that that e-stop variable comes up right under our variables just as the light variable did. Now we're going to drag and drop that e-stop variable into our e-stop button. So we've now created a variable to go with that button, and now we need to create the actual alarm. So if we come back into our Project Explorer, up to the top, with a little red bell, you'll see alarms. We right click on that and hit add a new alarm. That will now create a new alarm for us, and if we want to click on it and move our mouse, we can name that alarm, and we'll name that e-stop also. We hit enter, <clears throat> and we have our alarm created. What we do now is if we double click on that alarm, it'll bring up the properties over here on the right hand side and we can take, we have the ability to highlight alarm variable under general, come over to the three options, the three dots for options, I'm sorry, and it'll open up and allow us to choose our e-stop variable as the variable for the alarm. So we choose that and hit OK and you now see that the alarm variable is e-stop. We come up and apply our changes with the green check mark we have now created a variable for our alarm, and if you see in the Project Explorer next to eStop under variable, you see our eStop variable. The last thing we need to add to our alarm before it works is a threshold that allows the alarm to know when to be trigger <coughs> triggered. So if we right click on eStop, we can go to the second thing and say add a new alarm threshold. We click on that and it will create a new threshold. If we want to click and remove our mouse, we can again stay consistent with our eStop name and make that. So now that we've created the alarm threshold, we're going to want to double click on it. And on the right hand side, again, it brings up the properties. What we're looking for is under execution, the first thing is activation value. It is currently set to zero, which means the alarm would not activate. We want to delete that and change that to one, which signifies on, and the alarm now knows to turn on when the e-stop button is also turned on. So we again come up to the green check mark and save our changes. And we now have an alarm button with a variable, an alarm, and a threshold to all turn on when we tell it to. So let's come up to our simulation and see it work. We start the project, save our changes, hit OK. So now let's say that we turned on the machine, it's running, there's some type of issue, and we come up and we hit the e-stop button. Now that we've hit the button, you now see that in our status bar, you see the e-stop has been turned on, and if we come over, <coughs> excuse me, to our e-stop alarm screen, you see that our e-stop alarm, the condition is on. If I attempt to click and turn it off or acknowledge it, I can't because it is still turned on. But if I come back to our first screen and turn it off, we can now come back over to our alarm screen and you see the condition is off. And I now have the ability to highlight it, acknowledge it, and delete it. So that is how we create an alarm and turn it on. So if we come in here and go back to design mode, I'm going to show how to add a data logger to that alarm so we can see how many times the alarm was turned on or turned off. So we're going to want to open up one more basic screen. We'll just open up screen three here. And the first thing we're going to add is over here in the toolbox, we're going to go all the way down to objects and we're going to find our data logger window and drag and drop that into our screen. We'll make it a little bit bigger here so it's easier to see and center it up. Now that we've created the data logger window, we're going to need to create a new data logger. So if we come over here into our project explorer and we right click on data logger and recipes, we can add a new data logger. That will create one and we can click on it and move our mouse and call it our e-stop log. We hit enter and we have now created the e-stop log. We now have the ability to double click on the e-stop log <clears throat> and bring up our properties for it. Under style, right now it is recording on a time frame, which we don't really want for something like this. We're going to uncheck that and come up to records on change. 
That means that it's going to re record anytime there's a change in our e-stop button. So we come up, apply our changes, and what we now do is come into our variables where we have our e-stop variable, and we're going to drag our e-stop variable up into the e-stop log. And now that we have our e-stop variable in the e-stop log, we're going to drag the entire e-stop log into the data logger window. Now that it's connected, we can come up into our simulation and see it work. So we start the simulation, save our changes, <clears throat> hit OK, and now we'll come over to our first screen. We already have the conveyor on. Let's turn an alarm on. <clears throat> and we can see in our status bar that there's an alarm on. If we come over to our e-stop alarm screen, we see the condition is on. Let's come back over. We'll turn the alarm off. We can see at the bottom that the e-stop goes away. Come over to our alarm screen. The condition is now off. We can click on that, acknowledge it, and delete it. But we've, what we've added now is over here on screen three, our logger, you can see that twice the zero was saying it was turned off and the one was saying it was turned on. So every time that alarm would be turned on or off, you have the ability to track it right here. So let's head back to our design mode. And that is how to create an alarm, an alarm screen, and a data logger to track your alarm in Visu Plus Express.